I mentioned there's four wide receiver types. We've hit on three of them kind of in the same vein to me as Jameson Williams is Garrett Wilson, his former teammate at Ohio state six foot, 183 pounds in like the nicest way possible. He's all over the place in kind of a similar way that Kadarius Tony was like, I'm sure Garrett w Wilson has like gone there and watched Stefan Diggs and Kadarius Tony. He's like, Hey man, I can do that stuff. Um, but, and I'll dive into this a little bit more. There's a balance between exaggerated movement and unnecessary movement. And he kind of toes the line there. He toes that line a lot. I thought he was, I call him a chaotic uh, rhythm player and kind of like Jerry Judy where like you can see how this could work like later on, but I think it could take him a couple years to reach those high end potential, but he certainly has the high end potential five-star recruit three-year contributor early to early declare. He has massive hands. He ran a four, three, eight, 40. He made one of the most ridiculous uh, catches Um just with the vertical leap ability. Um, so really it's just, he has everything analytically 96 percentile prospect that's tops in the class. Um, but when you turn on the tape, he is an overseller. And I think overselling works in college a little bit more than it does to the NFL, but there's, there's room to fix that. Like to me, yes. like you don't fix like natural athleticism. You don't fit his like innate ability to cross people up, but kind of like how it's been with Jerry Judy, the first two years in the NFL for Jerry Judy have not been all that great. I know he's been dealing with injuries too, but I'm not completely out on Jerry Judy long-term because if he cleans up a little bit of, the, of that choppiness, that little bit of that chaotic uh, play, you can see how he can turn into a legit number one receiver. So um, I'm in on Garrett Wilson. I'm just going to be a little, I wouldn't be that surprised if like the rookie season wasn't like as crazy as, um, we were hoping for. Yeah. You see a lot of wide receiver prospects coming to the league that are stiff. You wish they like played a little bit looser, that they were more exaggerated. I mean, he's the opposite. I wish he would tighten up a little bit, like let each movement have a bit more purpose and get rid of all the wasted stuff. Like you actually see him run down the field like this at yeah. times with some of his separation. And it's cause it's all over. It's like not controlled. It's not a complete package. I, I love the effort. Garrett love it let's just get rid of some of it just a little bit because there's so much quality there again I there's a lot of that natural I'm going to stress you with a vertical stem get you off balance attack the blind spots get you stepping in the wrong direction even if it's press coverage or off coverage or whatever and then create space that many other people cannot and then I believe he's a little bit more athletic than a lot of people thought he was as well so to me, there's there's 100% something there. I definitely want to invest and and take the time here. Uh, he's probably more athletic than like a Deontay Johnson coming to the league. But Deontay, I think, had a few of these issues. And some of that yep. is you know, the difference between Toledo and, and Ohio State. There's a lot, a lot to like. And in fact, I would almost prefer to rein it in versus try to get someone to get on this level. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. He he's on that Deontay Johnson, Justin Jefferson kind of spectrum, where he might be Deontay Johnson to start his career, but if he cleans up everything else, he can kind of get that natural wiggle that Justin Jefferson has and be that number one receiver. So, um, I I slapped a late round one grade just because um, of some of these issues, but I think that he's definitely a risk worth gambling on, and the 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 analytical profile is like off the charts, ninety six percentile early declare everything that you'd want. The analytical profile is there. So I'm going to love them. Um, I think it might be like a year two breakout, um, but that's totally fine for an NFL team. Yeah. I mean, just look at this boom forces him to take, take that extra step upfield after attacking and forcing the hips towards the sideline, breaks it off in just two steps, creates and sustains that little bit of extra ground. The ball is 100% in the air, catches it, tries to get up the field a little bit. And just looking at the heat map, indifference versus the Traylon Burks and some of the others that we see. I mean, when you have to work in a condensed field, which is along the sideline, that's when you're working in a phone booth, right? Yep. That's when all of these movements do create space for you. And he's absolutely winning along the right sideline there during his time at, uh, at Ohio state. Lots of like, lots of like with Garrett Wilson. All right. I guess we just got to conclude with this teammate. 
and Chris Olave. Here he is. 6'1", 187 pounds. Hayden doesn't have those exaggerated movements or quick feet, which is kind of funny when you watch him in comparison to not just Ohio State's offense, but back-to-back with Garrett Wilson because they're constantly working in the same alignments. Like one will be here, one will be here, and then they'll flip the next series or the next snap. Even on mesh patterns or crossing routes, like sometimes a lot of it be the short guy, sometimes he'll be the deeper receiver. So they're asked to kind of win in the same areas. But the two packages that they put on the field is a very, very stark contrast. It's literally opposite. Like in my scouting report for Olave, I say no wasted movement. Like, and that's exactly what he is. He's super polished. He can get downfield. He can stack you up and then he can separate because he's definitely got plus athleticism too. Uh, I just didn't see all the natural wiggle that Garrett Wilson has. He yeah. also doesn't have the same exact analytical profile. He was a non early declare, which is what we like. And some of his metrics yards per out run versus man coverage only 1.3 that was last of these top five also yards per out run uh, i call it the non mickey mouse routes uh he was uh also last and those were remove screen plays behind the line of scrimmage tosses like that touchdown just when you're w- winning uh on the actual nfl routes and i think that the r- biggest issue that chris olave had to me was just that play strength there was a couple times against press man coverage where i thought he was getting a little bit taken advantage of. He also was working with uh, the kind of the easiest routes. He was partnered up with Garrett Wilson and uh, the other uh, 2023 prospect. So he was winning on all these kind of zone vertical shots where he's just like getting between quarters coverage and just separating, which is valuable. But I see him more as a number two receiver in the NFL, kind of on that Will uh, Fuller spectrum. Uh, he is very polished though. So, um, I gave him a late round one grade, but I would want him to be my number two receiver, not my number one. Yeah. I think that's a very fair final word to put on him. And while we just talked about, you know, the Garrett Wilson's, the Jameson Williams, I think like this route that's coming up after this one best explains his style And it's all about changing speeds. It's changing pace because this is someone who runs what, like a four, three, nine, but here he's jogging, 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 and then boom, he unleashes. And you see this quite a bit from him that instead of it's that choppy footwork or ISO crossovers, like when we liken, you know, press coverage or man coverage to, to basketball stuff, uh, it's all just about changing speeds for him. And that's a danger too, because as soon again, as he either creates a wealth of separation on these, you know, press corners early in games, or he goes and creates a big play early on. They are terrified of it. Like they they are terrified of it for a lot of the contest, but I'm with you. Like it's a very, I wouldn't say specialized skill because it's a important skill at the NFL level, but so much of the downfield that he is like a perfect complement or supplement to a wide receiver a wide receiver group out there. He's not great after the catch, forced 12 missed tackles his entire career. He 100% loses shoving matches um, during his time there. Sorry, just 10 broken tackles on 176 receptions during his his time at Ohio State. So like, again, when we talked about with Traylon Burks and some of these others, he's not a Shanahan type. He's probably not a McDaniel type. But again, vertical playmaker, Absolutely useful, 100% useful at the NFL level. And like, I know that he did the agilities was one of the few wide receivers that did it at the combine. They weren't good. They were like bottom 33rd percentile. There are some other wide receivers that win deep like this that still have that. Like I looked at Golden Tate, who's a very similar frame, the very similar agilities can do that too. Curtis Samuel is the exact same way. Now Samuel's probably a bit better, much better after the catch, but changing this pacing, it doesn't all have to be the same way. Like as much as I have a bias, towards route running, creating separation with sudden movements. This 100% works. And I actually think he's really, really adept at using his body for his size and having that body positioning as an advantage for him to to win and come down with these contested catches too. Yeah, he he's just so smooth. Like that's just like the easiest way. He's just the smoothest guy on the field. Just the I keep coming back to this. Like what ex- explain this? Yards per run versus man coverage. Garrett Wilson 3, Traylon Burks 3.6, Drake London 3.7, Jameson Williams 3.3 and then Chris Olave 1.3. Like 
that scares me a little bit for somebody who had career highs as a, as a senior um, in college. I don't know. Like, can I, I okay. get it? Let's theorize. Let's theorize here. Okay. Part of me wonders and believes that Chris Olave is a better route runner at the intermediate and downfield portions of the field than he is in the quick game. Okay. I think that's safe to say. Yeah. I like that. Now, because of that, and look at his heat map again on PFF's draft guide, it's all vertical. It's all down the field. And so I'm not exactly sure how these are counted on if as soon as he crosses the two high safeties that we see that, if that's viewed as beating zone coverage as well, because he kind of can be a too high man beater or too high beater, I should say, of his own coverage because he goes in the middle of the field and wins there as well or goes over the top of it. So it's it's interesting. It's very easy to say man coverage when it's in the one to five to seven yard range. But when you get beyond that where Chris Olave shines, I don't know if it gets a little bit fuzzy or hazy, but I could be wrong. Yeah, no, I, I get that. But even if that is the explanation, that means that he's just winning in zone coverage on like the deep part of the field. Like that's like, that's more of an easier kind of thing to, to figure out. Like that's where we have MVS. Um, yeah. But I agree. PFF says reliable number two at Z receiver. Perfect. That sounds great to me. I don't, I'm not arguing against that. How do you put the value on that? Uh, to me, that's like late round one, early round two. I don't see like where he becomes a Jamar chase or a Justin Jefferson. I think well, he's like the next. But if if we want to be fair, yeah, yeah. If we want to be fair, I don't see a Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, heck, Jalen Waddle, or maybe even Devontae Smith in this draft. You know, oh, I, we we talked about Drake London. He can Drake London can get into that tier, in my opinion. I think Drake London okay. can like turn into like ninety percent Devontae Adams type of number one receiver at all three levels. I don't see how Chris Olave gets there. So, hmm. have you watched the Rutgers game with Olave? I think there was like a little bit of that yes. two step quickness, and that was probably his best game his best game for that, but I'm with you. I even wrote down sometimes on those quick patterns he had to shove off to create the separation and, and do all that type of stuff versus what we see with others. <laughs>